With a lack of a free update, the concern of being the last DLC, an underwhelming uniqueness, and the fact that it's a paid DLC to begin with, the Secret Species Pack has become one of the least popular DLCs for many, and has been filled with controversy throughout the Jurassic community. Hello everyone, welcome back. We're going back to Jurassic World Evolution 2 again to discuss the latest DLC, as it's been over a week now, and with taking the words of the Duchess, We will reconvene and allow cooler heads to prevail. I figured I should give my thoughts on the controversy regarding the latest pack. So let's enter the layer of controversy, face the spider within, and upon coming out victorious, not only resolved the matter, but also brought to light how much like a giant chicken, the secret species pack can be improved. So we're going to start this therapy session strong, so let's sit by the fire and get right into the controversy. And I'm just going to say that my own thoughts on this, which, like many, I am in the mix. I am happy that we got these species in the game that were from the former game. I'm also happy that we have another canon species in the list added to the game. That leaves us with only two species missing, the Microceratus and the Smilodon as of the moment. That could change definitely very soon. But there is a lot of disappointment with this DLC. For one, the fact that three of these species are in it to begin with as a paid DLC. DLC because of the fact that they were in the first game. And this is a controversy that Frontier is unfortunately not new to, as the start of this game actually started with this very situation of controversy, as the deluxe pack was riddled with ridicule, as unfortunately it was featuring a previous dinosaur from Evolution 1, and we had to pay loads of money to get it back, and that was of course the Hyangosaurus. It left a bad taste in many people's mouth at the start of the game, and while the other species were welcome additions for many, the Hyangosaurus left a very negative spin on that DLC, because it was a species we had to pay for again, when literally every species, except for the three hybrids, were already going to be included in the base game. And with that, it led to this DLC being hit extremely hard upon its announce because we were all feeling that same feeling again, as we were like, okay, if they're not going to include them, why are we going to want to see them return if we have to pay for them? And it's also much like how the Raptor Squad in the first game for their skins we had to pay for in order to get them, which, again, is not a good representation, but... Not only that, it's also the fact that we were hit by another controversy, as this was the first DLC for both games to not include a proper free update. Other than some glitch changes and bug fixes, there was no free update whatsoever. And for me, honestly, that was where it really hit. Because in all truths, even for the bad DLCs, even for the greatest, Many people can agree that it's usually, apart from the expansions, which might be a rival, it's usually the free update that is the best inclusion at the time. Especially because we have those three month waits where we are anticipating what we could get in them more than we do for the DLCs in fact. But unfortunately, we didn't get that with this update. And it really, really hit hard. A lot of people were talking about it before its launch, and when it did launch last week, many people were like, was this even worth the price tag? Because, unfortunately, another controversy was showcased as I discussed in my review of the DLC. It was the fact that, apart from the Spinoraptor, really, none of the dinosaurs were that unique. Even the Spinoraptor itself, apart from its human kill animation and its admittedly awesome animation against medium carnivores like Baryonyx, it doesn't really have anything unique to it. Its attack animations are reused from both this game and the first game. Its behavior with its own is pretty much the same. And the only other unique thing that wasn't brought from the first game is actually their behavior with the other dinosaurs that make up their DNA. With the Spinoraptor 
being with the Velociraptor, and strangely enough, not the Spinosaurus. Spinoceratops being the same with Spinoceratops, Ankylodocus with Ankylosaurus and Diplodocus, and Stegoceratops with Stegosaurus and Triceratops. But even then, those unique changes to them don't actually have much uniqueness, as some of them are pretty much the exact same. I mean, the Stegoceratops animation with any Ceratopsian is literally the base Ceratopsian social animation, which is a big shame. But I think despite all of that, it does have potential, and this is what we're going to talk about for the main thing. I've given my thoughts. I would say that this is probably, in my opinion, as someone who didn't get the Secrets of Dr. Wu DLC for the first game, as it didn't really interest me as much, I would say that I have a very similar feeling with this DLC in many regards. I am happy to have the species, I am happy to have the bioluminescent genes for them and also the Indominus Rex and Indoraptor, but I do agree that it did leave a bad taste in the mouth. But there is hope because much like how the previous DLC, the Predator Pack, had a big error with one of its creatures, that being the Gigantoraptor, being part of the Predator Pack but not really acting like a Predator, while yes it did have some amazing animations beforehand, there was light brought to it by a surprise update, which showcased it being able to attack people now, and also have some hunting animations as well against creatures, and it was a genuinely great surprise for many, and also it elevated that creature even higher than it already was. And that's coming from what many consider one of the best DLCs. Now, considering that, and then going down the secret species pack, it's a big downgrade for many. But, there is hope that they can fix it. Many of the issues that we had with this secret species pack, or I'll just call it the hybrid pack because it literally is, is the fact that none of these creatures are really unique. The Spinoraptor has like one or two unique animations, and for the rest, basically nothing. I don't think there's one unique animation for any of the other three, except maybe how the Spinoceratops eats fish. But that's because it's the only Ceratopsian that does eat fish, so that doesn't even really count. But I think that they can improve upon them with a surprise update, which I think they might be doing just on the fact that we didn't get a free update originally. Yes, I know that because of the letting go of many employees due to events of last year and their financial struggles, Frontier have been struggling in many cases, but I think that it's very likely that they will still be able to bounce back from this. We already have news that another DLC is on the way, which will be in another video, but more importantly, I think what they can do is because of the lack of a free update now, they could use that time to work on it more, and between the time of this DLC and what will be the next DLC, which we don't know as of yet, which most likely will be in June time, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's very likely that between that time, much like how we got with the Gigantoraptor, we could see a free update much like that. It won't be too big, it won't be too crazy, at least I don't think so. If it is, it'd be a bigger surprise, but I think because of what fans have been saying, and the fact that Frontier have been listening very much for what fans have wanted, I think it's very likely that they will take this advice that we have for this latest DLC, and I think that they will respond accordingly and try and make it better. And I think there's a lot of ways they could do it. For one, they can make Ankylodocus a sauropod that can actually defend itself, as it should have been. The Spinoceratops, they could easily do some different animations to rig it around using inspiration from the movies for animations like they have with the Spinosaurus as well. Stegoceratops is the one that I'm gonna be honest is like not gonna really benefit from this because they can't they haven't really been able to do anything unique with it. It's already many people's least favorite hybrid, understandably so. And I think that realistically if they just work on this little bit of detail for these creatures, I think it can improve people's opinions way more. Now, in terms of if this is happening, that's up to Frontier. 
that is not in our control. All we can do is stress our opinions and maybe we can get a positive response to them. And knowing Frontier, it's very likely that's a strong point. But that is my opinion on the Secret Species Pack. I am happy with it in many ways. I am sad in other ways. But I think that all in all for anyone on either side, we can only agree that it could have used a major improvement. And it's very likely with our words of encouragement, Frontier may do so. Thank you so much for watching, folks. Maybe liking, subscribing, stay safe, everyone. And remember that you are all amazing. Never forget that, and hopefully I'll see you next time. But until then... Enjoy yourself.